Let me show you how to stream on Kick using Streamlabs. First thing we wanna do is head over to streamlabs.com, which I'll leave linked in the description down below. And then we're gonna click on download Streamlabs desktop. Then once it's done downloading, simply just run the installation process. You'll have to go through their onboarding process, but you can just simply skip through everything because I'm gonna be showing you how to do everything from scratch, step by step. It's gonna be super easy, I promise. So once you've skipped through everything, you should be brought to a blank template like this. And if you're familiar with OBS Studio, then this should be a piece of cake. This is going to be your stream preview, so everything that your stream sees. This mini feed is gonna be all of your different events that pop up. However, right now, Kick isn't really integrated into Streamlabs, so this isn't actually gonna show anything. Then you have your different scenes. So this is gonna be your just chatting scene, your gameplay scene, your BRB scene. Then you have your sources, which are the things that show up on your actual stream, like your camera, your game. And then you have your mixer, which is all of your different audio sources. So your game audio and your mic audio. So we're gonna go over to the settings to the bottom left corner, click this little cogwheel looking thing. You'll see all the different tabs here on the side, but don't worry, we're gonna break it down. It's gonna be super easy. The general tab, you don't really have to worry about anything. If for whatever reason, you're having some weird stream issues, you might wanna disable hardware acceleration, but for most people, this won't apply. So we're gonna move on to the next tab, which is multi-streaming. If you wanna stream to multiple platforms at the same time, Streamlabs makes it super easy for you, but unfortunately, it's behind a paywall. But if you guys wanna get access to Streamlabs Ultra, I'll leave a link in the description down below where you can check it out. But if you just wanna stream to Kick, just go to the Stream tab. Then we're gonna go to Stream Type, streaming services. We're going to click on custom streaming server. And now we got to go to our kick page. I made a brand new dummy account just for you guys. So we're going to go to our kick page by going to the top right corner, click on creator dashboard. Then we're going to go to the left hand side that says settings. And then we're going to click on stream key. Don't show this information to anybody because otherwise they'll be able to stream from your account. And we don't want that unless you're super lazy and you want to have people stream for you, which is probably a good business idea. Nobody take that. So we're going to copy the stream URL button with control C, or you can simply hit this little button right there. And we're gonna paste it in the URL section of Streamlabs. We're gonna copy this stream key. So we're gonna click this little copy button once again, and we're gonna paste it in the stream key portion of the Streamlabs settings. So now we've connected our Kick account to our Streamlabs. So when we actually hit go live, it'll be broadcasting to our Kick page, if that makes sense. So now we can go to the output settings, and this is where everyone rips out their hair, including myself, because nobody really cares or wants to know what this does, because it's all nerdy information. But very simply put, this is where you're going to control the quality of your stream. So to keep it very basic, change your output mode to advanced, which is kind of the opposite of what we want to do, right? We want to keep it simple, but trust me on this. Then click on streaming. Audio track is going to be one. For your encoder options, this is going to depend on the type of graphics card that you have. I have an NVIDIA graphics card, and most of you probably do as well. And if you have the option to do NVIDIA NVEC H.264 new, you should select that one. Or you can pick the one below it, or if you have a different graphics card, you're gonna pick whatever graphics card you have here. There's so many different graphics cards out there, so if you have one that's not listed right here, just use a Google search and ask what encoder should I use for streaming with this graphics card? And you'll probably find a Reddit thread with an answer for you. So I'm gonna click on this option, and if you guys are getting a black screen or something's not working, by the way, it could be the culprit right here in force streaming setting encoder settings, so you could leave that on or off if you're having problems. I'm gonna leave it on for now, but just a reminder, if you are getting a black screen or something, that could be the little POS that's causing it. For your rate control, I recommend using CBR. Your bit rate depends on the internet that you have, your internet speed. So this is gonna vary, but I recommend trying to do 6,000 to 8,000, or you could even go higher if you want, but I believe Kick has a cap of 8,000 bit rate. So I don't think there's really a point going past 8,000. I also have a much more in-depth detailed video on this in the top right corner, showing you the exact bit rate to use, depending on your internet speed and setup. So if you want more information on that, you can watch that video in the top right corner. But these are just some quick settings to get you started. For your keyframe interval, you want to put two. Preset is quality, profile main, psycho visual tuning is turned on, GPU zero, max B frames two. Next, we're going to click on the audio tab right at the top, and we're going to change these audio bit rates to 320 just to give us the best audio quality. Then we're going to click on the actual audio tab on the left, and we're only going to really mess with two things. The desktop audio device one, you're going to want to select wherever your game audio or whatever audio you're trying to share with your stream is. So I know that I'm using an audio interface and it's coming out of my speakers of my Yamaha ZG01. So I'll click that and you could confirm that if you're on Windows or whatever you're using by going to the bottom of the screen and you can right click and go to sounds. Then you can go to 
playback and whatever the default device is, is probably what you're listening out of your actual computer you're getting volume from. Whatever the default device is, is usually what you're gonna pick for your desktop audio device. Next, we're gonna go to our microphone device one, and this is simply just gonna be the microphone that you wanna use. I'm using the PD400X microphone. I actually really recommend it. And I have a whole video covering it in the top right corner if you're interested. Gotta make that sweet affiliate revenue, baby. And these are really the only two audio devices that you have to worry about. So let's move on to the video tab next. And by the way, if you guys want more helpful streaming videos from me, make sure to drop a like on the video so YouTube recommends my videos to you guys. Plus it makes me really happy. So now we're gonna click on the video tab. Your base canvas resolution is whatever the resolution is of the monitor that you're playing off of. I'm playing off of a 1080p monitor, so I'm gonna choose 1080p, aka 1920 by 1080. The output scaled resolution is what you wanna stream to. So I wanna stream to 1080p, 60 frames per second. So I'm scaling it to 1080p. Your downscale filter, I recommend choosing Lanscos for the best quality. FPS type is common and common FPS values is 60 because we wanna stream at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Makes sense, right? Then we have our hotkeys tab and this is just gonna be different hotkeys that you can set up to do certain actions. I have a video in the top right corner going over hotkeys more in depth, so I don't wanna waste your time here. Then we're gonna go over the advanced tab and we're only gonna really look at one thing. I just wanna give you an option. So if you scroll down, you can see an option that says dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames while streaming. You could turn this on and I would recommend it to people that have internet that fluctuates all the time. And what it'll do is if you enable it, instead of your stream buffering and stuttering to your viewers, it'll just lower the quality of your stream and make sure it's a consistent stream without buffer or stuttering. So you could enable that if you'd like. As far as everything else, doesn't really matter. Then you have your scene collections and all this other extras, which you can feel free to go through on your own time, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. So now that we're done with the settings, we can click done. Now we're gonna set up a very simple live stream setup. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually boot up a game. I'm gonna boot up a Steam game. Let's go with Hollow Knight. So I'm just gonna boot this up for you. So now we got our game booted up. So I'm gonna alt tab into Streamlabs. And now you can already see that now my game volume is getting picked up through my desktop audio. So you can adjust the volume here. And you can also see when I'm talking to my microphone that our audio is getting picked up as well by these little bars. So let's start with our first source and we're gonna do a screen capture. So this will capture our game. And we're gonna click add source. We can just leave it as screen capture, add source again. We have a lot of different options here. We have automatic, which should work for most of your games as it did right there. So if we just click done. You can see our game's being captured, but let's say it didn't work. We're gonna double click back on that source and you can choose to capture your entire screen. So right now you're seeing what I'm seeing on my screen, or you can specifically capture a window. So you can click on Hollow Knight and it'll capture it that way. And if you're still having issues and none of these are working for you, you can go into your game and change the resolution of the game, whether that be borderless windowed or windowed or full screen, and you can mess around with those settings. But I'm just gonna leave it on automatic because it'll pick up my other games most of the time too. And I'm gonna click done. So now that we got our game on there, we're gonna add another source and I'm gonna do video capture device for my webcam, click add source. We can rename it webcam, add source. And we're gonna pick our webcam from this drop down list. Unfortunately, I'm using the good camera for the YouTube video. So I'm gonna use my integrated onboard laptop webcam, which should probably look pretty bad. This is what our integrated webcam looks like. Oh God, spare me, please. So now that we have our webcam up, I'm just gonna hit close. And now we're going to take the corners of the webcam to adjust the size. If you're on Windows, you can hold Alt and then drag the sides or the top and bottom, and you can kind of crop it to your little heart's desires. I'm just gonna make it a little square like so, maybe a little bit bigger, and we're just gonna pop it in the corner. Actually, I lied, we're gonna pop it in the other corner. So now we got our webcam, we got our game, we got our game volume, we got our microphone volume. So now we're gonna hit go live in the bottom right corner. Now you can see we've already started streaming to kick, so let's actually go to our kick page. So I'm under the creator dashboard right now, and as you can see, we have streaming at the top, zero viewers, because we just started. We got one follower on our dummy account. We've been live for this amount of time, so you're gonna see all of your stats here, including the sub counter, as well as some quick action buttons, like this edit stream info, if you wanna change your title or your game, then you'll just hit save. Then you can see your activity feed up here, which is gonna be your followers, your subs, and then you have your chat where you can chat to your chat. So a lot of times I said chat. And just remember, if you have your creator dashboard open, I'd recommend at least muting it, so that way you don't hear double audio. But once you're ready to end your stream, you're just gonna go back to Streamlabs, and then you're gonna click the end stream button. Then you'll go back to your creator dashboard, give it a couple seconds. It'll say that your channel is currently offline and then it's in process of stopping the session, which can take a couple minutes. But after you've stopped the session, you can go to the top right corner and click on channel. So now it says that we're not live anymore. So I'll just refresh my page. You can see that our past broadcast has appeared at the top, but you can also find it under the videos and click on it and you can watch the entire past broadcast of your kick stream. Now, if you wanna set up your chat on your screen, set up your alerts for whenever you get a follower and donations and everything, I have all the easy tutorial videos for you guys 
guys to the side of me in this nice playlist for you. So give those a watch. You can come ask questions while I'm live on kick in the description down below. But my name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.